Jerry of the Circus. for Jerry of the Circus. Easy there, kittens. You'll all get your dinners. There's plenty here for all of you. Hello, Jason. What are you doing? Oh, hello, Jerry. I'm just feeding the cats. Mind if I watch? Oh, no. You know, it, it seems so funny calling these wild animals cats. Well, there's an awful lot of difference in cats, but still they're all from the cat family. There you are, Bess. See what you can do with that piece of meat. Collie, look at her gobble up that meat. You'd think they'd never had anything to eat before in their lives, the way they're acting. You sure they get enough, Jason? Sure, they just act that way when they smell fresh meat. That's what makes them wild. Here's your portion, Daisy. What? No dinner? You really mean you don't want to eat? Oh, well, I guess I got a sick cat here, Jerry. Sick? Why? When a big old lioness like Daisy here doesn't want raw meat, something's wrong with her. What's the matter, Daisy? Let's have a look at you. How can you put your hand right through the bars into the cage? Won't she hurt you? Well, kind of scraped off some hind off your flank, huh, Daisy? See that, Jerry? Gee whiz. How'd that happen? It's all sore. Oh, I guess she got it in running through the chute. Running through the chute? What's that? The chute, Jerry, is that long runway from the animal's cages into the steel. And the steel is the big cage where you do your act, huh? Well, that's right. Here, Daisy, take it easy. I'll fix that cut later. Won't it get well by itself? Probably, but it's so high on her shoulder she can't lick it. Yeah, I know. Even dogs make cuts well by licking them. So I'll help it along with a bit of medicine. Here, wait a minute, Daisy. Let me get at you. I want to get my friend Jerry a charm. Collie, you pulled hair right out of her head. Yes, sir. And now I'm going to twist it up and tie a little knot at each end and this way. There. There you are, Jerry. What's that for? Well, that's a charm. A charm? What kind of a charm? Well, out in India, the natives believe that a bunch of hair from the head of a lioness will protect them from ever being hurt by a wild jungle animal. Is it true, Jason? <laughs> well, the natives think so. You think it'll keep me from being hurt by a jungle animal? I don't know, Jerry, but carry it with you anyhow. Thanks, I will. Do you carry a charm like this? No, to be truthful, I don't believe in charms. I guess you should have had some kind of a charm when Mr. Randall asked you where you were during the robbery. Then maybe you could have told him where you were at the very minute. I guess just telling him where I was wouldn't help much. I'd have to have a witness to prove it. No, Jerry, I guess I'll just have to be suspected of being guilty until I'm proven innocent. Did you really take a walk by yourself? Why, sure, Jerry. You believe me, don't you? Yeah, sure I believe you, Jason. Hey, look who's coming. Well, Patsy, hello. Hello, Jason. Say, I missed you at dinner tonight. What brings you around here this time, Patsy? I've got some news. Come on over here and sit on this box, Jerry. I've got something to show you. Yeah? What is it? Come on, sit here beside me. All right. Mm, that's it. Jerry, I just got an airmail letter from my father, and there's some news in it about your Uncle Dan. Oh, boy, that's keen. Does he know where my uncle is? I'll read you what he has to say. But first, look at this, Jerry. Here's an old picture of your uncle. Sure enough. Gee, you know, Dad had a picture just like that one. But that was taken years ago when Uncle Dan was, was just a young fella. Here, uh, want to see it, Jason? Yeah. Well, so that's your Uncle Dan, huh, Jerry? Well, I'd better put that medicine on Daisy and fix her up before the show. It's getting late. All right, Jason. Listen, Jerry. Here's what my father wrote. Let's see. Oh, yes, here it is. You asked about Danny Dugan. 
Well, dear, I haven't heard of him in years. The last I heard of him, he was making one of his trips to Africa on a big game expedition for the Marsh Museum. And I think that's been over five or six years ago. You say his nephew has joined the circus. Well, give the boy the enclosed picture of his uncle. It was taken in winter quarters when we were together years ago. He might like to have it. Ah, oh, gee, I, I'm glad to have this picture, but, but golly, I, I was figuring that maybe he knew where Uncle Dan was. Hmm. Say, I've got it, Jerry. I'll write a letter to the Marsh Museum and, and see if they know anything about him. You will? Sure. Ah, oh, gee, you're swell, Patsy. Gee whiz, listen, listen to that lion. Let's go over and watch. Come on, Patsy. Oh, I hate to see animals hurt. Well, that's over. You think she'll be all right now? I hope so. It's, it's getting late, Jason. Don't you think you'd better have something to eat before you go on? Uh, no, thanks. I'll be all right. I'm just not hungry tonight. Hmm. I guess nobody's hungry tonight. Lorenz and Decker didn't come in for dinner either. What? I said that... You mean to say Lorenz and Decker weren't in the mess tent tonight? That's what I said. Oh, well, they weren't there, Jason. Does Why? Randall know that? I don't know. Why? Why? He gave the three of us orders to stay right on the lot. I'm going to check up and see if they're here. Well, I'll be seeing you. I've got the dress. Want to come with me, Jerry? I sure do. I guess we'd better go to your wagon first. How could Decker and Lorenz get off the lot? Oh, it's possible, all right. We've only got a few policemen, and after all, Barney can't keep them guarding the entire lot every minute. Who's Barney, Jason? He's in charge of the circus police force. Oh, do you have to have policemen? We certainly do. You know, Jerry, a, a big circus with a, as many people as we have is like a small city. And who ever heard of a city without law and order and a police force? Holly, I'm learning more about the circus every day. Well, here we are, Jerry. You run into the wagon and see if they're here. Okay. Decker! Decker! He's not here. Nobody's here. The wagon's empty. I, I guess Bumps is over in the pad room. Already getting ready to do his walk around with rags. Well, that's funny. Decker and Lorenz are usually getting ready for their act about this time. It's almost time for the show to start. Did you notice if their knives and props were in there, Jerry? No, I didn't. Well, just a minute. I'll have a look. Maybe they went over to the big top early this evening. No, no one here. That sure is funny. Their, their knives and props and even their costumes are in the wagon. Come on, Jerry. Let's get over to the pad room and see if Bumps has seen them. They'll miss the show. They go on a few minutes after the pad. Yeah, well, let's hurry. We've got time. My golly, if they've gotten away. Y you don't think they've quit the show, do you? I don't know, Jerry, but it sure looks funny. Here we are. Oh, there's Bumps over there. Bumps? Oh, Bumps, come here a minute. Oh, yeah. oh, hello. Have you got a minute, Bumps? Well, that's about all. Just about to go on. Now, listen, Bumps, have you seen Decker or Lorenz? Are they around here anywhere? No, I haven't seen them. Aren't they over at the wagon? No, that's why we came here looking for them. Mm, gee, that is funny. They should be ready for their act by now. Oh, say, come to think of it, I don't remember seeing them in the mess tent at dinner either. I wonder... Yeah, that's just what I'm wondering. You better go tell Randall... Oh, 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 the walk-around's going to start. I'll have to go. Tell Randall that Decker and Lorenz aren't here yet. You bet I will. It looks as if I was right after all. I tried to warn Mr. Randall. What do you mean? Well, it looks as if Decker and Lorenz have skipped out the show and taken the payroll money with them. Oh, no, not Decker. I'm sorry, Jerry, but it certainly looks bad. But Decker isn't that kind of a fella. If they've run away, Jerry, there isn't much question as to who stole the money. Well, that, that clears you then, doesn't it, Jason? It looks that way. I've got to hurry and get over to Randall so he can notify the police. See you later, Jerry. Hmm. Mm. A lot of smoke out here on this back platform. No wonder nobody but you and I will sit out here. Loren, I know you won't like me seeing this again, but I don't like this whole business. Decker, for the last time, stop preaching. I know what I'm doing. It's a wonder I can do anything the way you are always trying to tell me right from wrong. But, Lorenz, don't you see that... I see you are a fool, Decker. If I take you with me, I do not know. You never want to pull any of the jobs we do. You're yellow. That's what you are. But planting this last job on Jason, it's just... Yeah. You'll take your share of the money, all right. No, Lorenz. I don't want that either. Oh, no? No, I don't. All I want is... Well, I want to go straight. <laughs> <laughs> you want to go straight, eh? <laughs> that is a good one. There's nothing funny about it. I'm through with this crooked business. Oh. 
You are through with it, huh? If you... If you just won't turn me over to the police. Listen, Decker. You are through. Forget the police. But... What do you mean? You are always through. I don't... I don't understand. I... Of course not. You don't understand anything. Oh, don't get me wrong, Lorenz. I do appreciate the way you shielded me from the police. And I appreciate the job you gave me when I was down and out. When you gave me a job in your act. I know it would have been hard for me to find work with a police record I've got. <laughs> oh, you thank me for keeping you from the police, huh? Decker, when I met you in that uh, cheap little restaurant five years ago and we talked and I offered you a job in my act... You didn't tell me you were wanted by the police. No. I told you. You you told me? What do you mean? I saw right away you were crazy. What are you talking about, Lorenz? Why, I needed somebody to help me pull a job then. You were a good man for my purpose, so I told you you were being looked for by the police. It wasn't true? Of course not, fool. Are you telling me the truth, Lorenz? Nothing but the truth. You mean to say I haven't a police record? Yes. As far as I know, you never did have any. And you roped me in to all these crooked deals. Ah, oh, forget it. I have no use for a weak-minded, crazy man like you. I'm going as far as this train will take me, and then I get another train and keep going. Tell me some more about that night you picked me up, Lorenz. Oh, oh okay. Uh, sit here beside me on this uh, railing deck, and I'll tell you plenty. Yeah, yeah, oh. Oh, you want to know more about yourself, huh? Yes, Lorenz, I do. Well, you were... You were dressed in cheap clothes, and... <laughs> come to think of it, you didn't even know your name. I asked you if it was Decker, and you didn't know, so I... I called you Decker. Then, then my name isn't Decker. Well, then... Who am I? What uh, difference does it make? What difference does it make? You picked me up when I was sick. You stuffed me full of a lot of lies about the police being after me. And then you get me into your dirty old deals. And now you ask me what difference it makes, who I am or where I'm going. Where you're going, Decker, will not make any difference. Now, over you go. That is finished. And so are you. You cannot fall off a train going 60 miles an hour and live to tell anybody about the man who pushed you off. Goodbye, Decker. And go to Evans.